Before we start the video today, let me introduce you to our sponsor for the day, Gingermail.life. Gingermail.life is the ultimate mailing service which also allows you to hang out and chat with all of your friends. It has top security and stability so you're sure to have a blast hanging out in the OG Gmail. This OG Gmail is scientifically proven to boost your IQ and I myself have had many benefits from using this program. Check out Gingermail in the link below and thanks again to the team at Gingermail for supporting us. Welcome back, Romologist. Today we'll be covering the ever-famous planet, the Sun. So here are 8 plus 1 facts you didn't know about the Sun. Deja vu. The sun is quite the well-known planet in our solar system, so I'm Pantry5 from Watchromo.com here to tell you some absolutely wild obscure facts that'll make you say wowzers. From everything from the sun's true color to if the sun will be our demise or not, learning these facts is sure to increase the IQ of our viewer base by 17 or possibly decrease. It could go either way really. Of course, we won't be going over anything that everybody already knows already though, <laughs> so don't worry about that. Without further ado, let's check out these factual wonders and abnormalities. Starting off this rowdy factomania, we have the age old question, is the sun going to exterminate the human race? We've all thought this at one point or another, so let's just cut to the chase. Scientists have claimed that the sun will one day consume the earth along with Venus and Mars once it devours all of the hydrogen and goes through its red giant phase. How exhilarating! Alternatively, once it's finished with its red giant phase, it will then collapse and one day shrink down and eventually become the size of our very own earth. But none of us will live to see any of this anyways, which is a real bummer, isn't it? Ooh. This next banger of a fact is quite the attractor. Did you know that the sun has a magnetic field? The electric currents inside of the flaming star generate a magnetic field which spreads throughout the solar system. This field causes activity at the surface of the sun, which is constantly surging in a solar cycle. This cycle spans about 11 years long and during the peak of the cycle, the polarity of the field flips in this time period of max sunspot activity. I bet the guy who stared at the sun for 11 years straight had fun developing this theory. The magnetic field also has two poles which flip at the peak of the activity cycle. A solar wind composed of charged particles carries the magnetic field away from the sun's surface and through the solar system. Sounds way more exciting than our regular old wind down here, huh? This stream of charged particles travels through the solar system at approximately 450 kilometers per second. These winds are released from the upper atmosphere of the sun, known as the corona. Welp, there's your two facts in one right there. Ooh. Our sun is more of an old dog than you might think. With it being about 4.6 billion years old, scientists predict that it's middle aged by now, which means it has burned off half of its hydrogen supply. In its current form, it's known as a yellow dwarf, but will later evolve and change as mentioned before. This isn't much of a surprise, as according to scientists, this is how old pretty much all of the planets in our solar system are. That's roughly 32 billion, 200 million in dog years, in case any of you were wondering out there. Ooh. If you've ever stared at the sun for entertainment purposes before like I have, you've probably noticed that the flaming sphere of joy comes off as quite the bright orangey yellow guy. This may be shocking to hear, but the solar circle himself actually identifies as more of a whitey yellow skin color in its core, albino-like if you will. Kind of a misleading design choice. The sun burns using nuclear fusion process, combining hydrogen into helium. The sun's surface is about 6000 Kelvin, which is 10,340 degrees Fahrenheit. It's with this temperature which makes it fit into the yellow color category. Hold on to your horses because this fact is going to hit you harder than a Zawarudo on a Sunday. 
Did you know that in around 8 whole minutes of traveling 300,000 kilometers per second, light travels from the sun's surface to the earth? And I thought eating an entire lasagna in 8 minutes was impressive. Even more aneurysm inducing is the fact that it takes millions of years for the energy to come from the sun's core to the sun's surface on top of the 8 minutes and 20 seconds afterwards. Ooh. Have you ever drawn a circle and noticed how the circle had a bunch of squiggly lines in it? Well according to scientists, this is not the case with the shape of the solar juggernaut, and it's actually just about as round as can be diameter wise. It's diameter of 1.391016 million kilometers is, according to science fanboy 37 over here, actually as close to a perfect sphere as can be just about, which is quite neato. With all of that smoothness, you'd think the sun would be flat as well, just like the Earth. Man, do I love the letter G, and it also happens to be the type of main sequence star Big Boy Sun over here is. A G-type main sequence star is a star that fits the criteria of the G code, and our sun happens to fit into this category. These G-types typically have to be white or ever slightly yellow, which as mentioned before, our sun is included in this regiment as well. Other G main sequence stars include the planets Mu Ara and Tau Ceti. These also have solar masses from between 0.84 to 1.15 solar masses and surface temperatures of between 5,300 and 6,000 Kelvin. The sun is one rowdy energy releaser, and this little bit from the scientist will tickle knowledge into you like no other. The sun's power levels are out of whack, being over 9,000. AKA, theoretical models of the sun's interior indicate a power density of approximately 276.5 watts per cubic meter, which according to this Wikipedia article and other reliable sources is a value that more nearly approximates that of reptile metabolism or a compost pile than of a thermonuclear bomb. <laughs> Time for an extra special bonus fact. Did you know that aliens are apparently stealing energy from the sun? According to NASA, UFOs were seen shooting out of the solar monstrosity itself and extracting its juicy 15 million Celsius at the core degree sublimities and taking it for itself. I'm no scientist, but if our competition is doing this sophisticated act already, then why aren't we? All we seem to care about is how perfectly circle this milky sun is, yet these big head boys are over here putting in work and sending it hard all the way to the sun. But yeah, here's some footage to prove this wondrous fact. Well Romologist, that was our facto rama on the sun. You decide if it was an IQ increase or not in the comments below you intellectual ginger male enthusiasts. Well, now for an exclusive plug to our Double Upload Sun special, The History of Knack. No wait, a special How It's Made on the Sun. Please take a look at this sneak peek utilizing the power of sandwiches. Take it away, Rick. What's going on, you cheeky weeaboos out there? Boy, do I have a video for you. As you can see, making a sun is just as easy as making a sandwich. Adding in all that hydrogen sure builds up the energy of a sun, just like our very own. You can learn more about it in our exclusive How It's Made episode on this fiery hot tamale in the link below. Or, just wait for our forced autoplay to follow through and make your day that much brighter. Wow, what an enticing offer. We definitely didn't just stretch out one video into two to exploit our viewership, no siree. You'd have to have cataracts to miss how good of a deal that is. Thanks for watching and hopefully that didn't lower your IQ or anything, and if it did, Get that back up with the IQ booster known as gingermail.life, link in the description. Be sure to Garfield Fireball smash that like button and subscribe for more Romo content within the next eon or so. Space, the unending void filled with stars, clouds, forces, and other amazing things. Sometimes, space can be confusing. Sometimes, it's too hard to make a sun. But in this video, we'll teach you how on WatchRomo.com's special episode of How It's Made, The Sun.
Welcome back, Romologists and whoever else there is watching. This is Rick from WatchRomo.com, and today on How It's Made, we have The Sun. This is an extremely special episode as we actually have an interview with The Sun. So we hope you enjoy this episode of WatchRomo.com Science. So like and subscribe. Before we jump into how it's made, though, we need to show you what it's made of. The Sun is a G-type main sequence star because of its spectral class. It is around 73.5% hydrogen, 25% helium, and less than 1% oxygen, carbon, iron, neon, nitrogen, silicon, magnesium, and sulfur. It's quite a melting pot. The hydrogen and helium was produced by Big Bang nucleosynthesis, and the heavier things were made by stellar nucleosynthesis in the generations of stars that finished their stellar evolution and gave material to the interstellar medium before the creation of the Sun. Today, nuclear fusion in the sun's core has changed the composition by turning hydrogen into helium. So the innermost portion of the sun is now around 60% helium with a lot of heavier elements remaining fine. So let's get into how it's made. Step 1. You'll need a lot of gas and space dust floating around just having a good old time. Then you need a force strong enough to push all this dust and gas together. In our case, we need waves of energy traveling through space that will press the clouds of gases and dust closer together to the point where it starts to spin. The spin should turn the cloud into a disk like a pancake. Then in the center, a protostar should form and become your sun. Now the sun is ready to be a sun. If you follow these steps well enough, then the gravity and pressure inside the core should be so great that it will generate heat and that should start doing nuclear fusion. Basically, it turns hydrogen into helium. It will take a lot of fuel though. Each second, your sun will eat more than 4 million metric tons of matter and convert it into energy. So far in our sun's lifespan, it's converted about 100 times the mass of the Earth into energy, which is about 1 100th its mass. Now, if this works right, your sun should be running at about 5,700 Kelvin, which is around equivalent to 5,500 Celsius, or 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit at the surface. In the core, though, it'll be around 15 million degrees Celsius, just hot enough to make the perfect hot pocket. Definitely hold that at arm's length so you don't burn your face. As you can probably tell, your sun is quite bright, but the sun is supposed to get even brighter. Because it's eaten so much of itself, it's actually becoming smaller and making the outer layers closer to the core, which exposes the outer layers to higher gravity, which adds more heat, making it brighter. Today, every 100 million years or so, the sun becomes 1% brighter. It is estimated that the sun has become around 30% brighter in the past 4.5 billion years. However, the sun is a consumable product technically. Every 10 billion years or so, you'll need to go and make a new one, or buy one from your local CVS for $19.99. The sun will run out of hydrogen to turn into helium, and it won't want to be small anymore, and will puff up to around 30 to 100 times the size it is now. Make sure it's outside when it hits this phase, because if not, it'll probably burn down your house. After it puffs up, it'll be known as a red giant. Red giants are red because its outside is cool, from around 9,000 to 3,000 Fahrenheit as it expands. For a star, red means cool. After the red giant phase, it'll expand and eat the Earth, Venus, and Mercury, then shrink again. After that, it'll probably become a planetary nebula after the helium gas explodes. Then, the next phase is a white dwarf where it'll burn off the rest of its fuel, then cool to the point of becoming a theoretical black dwarf. From there on, the sun will simply be a cold rock in space, waiting to hit something. But who knows? Those are just theories. Why don't we ask the sun ourselves? Yo, what's up everybody? You're watching WatchRomo.com. I'm Pantry5 with an exclusive interview featuring Mr. Sun himself. It's a funny story actually. I was just chilling down in the village with my homies. But all of a sudden, I bump into the famed legend, Mr. Sun. Alright, anyway, time to get it together. Let's get into this interview. 
So tell me, Mr. Sun, you've been a lingering entity who's aided us with the cooking of Hot Pockets and lasagnas for all these years. But it would be awesome to know your lore pack origin story. So, how are you created, Mr. Sun? <laughs> around the world ah i see i'll stick to my garfield theory then okay so of course mr sun we have all of this crazy information about you but how does it feel to be the one stalked by all of these scientists throughout the years for them to come up with all of these far out theories bro quite shy, it's a shame really. Alright, and finally, on a scale of 1 to 10, how hyped are you to overhydrate yourself and all of that hydrogen and evolve into your next stage as a red giant in the next couple of billions of years, my boy? Aw oh, shucks, he escaped the press once again. Happens every time. Well, sorry about that, Rick. Hope that bit of info there that I managed to squeeze out of the pop culture figure will do. Well, that interview was quite informative. Big shout out to Pantry 5 from Watch Romo for that information. Wow, we! That was quite a video. Be sure to leave a like comment and subscribe to watchromo.com for more content. For our next video, top 10 savage moments in Cory in the house. And be sure to check out our last video, top 5 anime betrayals in Romeo and Juliet.